Greetings, friends. It's an honor once again to welcome you back to Rick's Garage. What you see before you are the pads on my Daytona crossbeam attachments. I've done a number of videos on these. I was one of the first to review these. Um, I actually got my hands on these cross members before they were even available in the stores. And what I found after a couple of years of use here is that these pads they put on these are woefully inadequate. You can see they've been cut wide open. Um, the reason for that is the jacking point on most of your unitized bodies are the pinch wells, the reinforced pinch wells where the rocker panel and the floor pan meet. What the manufacturers do is reinforce these pinch wells in an area in the front and an area in the back and they have a little notch to let you know where to jack the car. You can check your uh, owner's manual. One of the problems is these pinch wells are quite sharp. As you can see they cut right through these rubber pads that come with the uh, cross beams. Now the good news is these pads are very inexpensive and they're readily available. Let me give you the information if you want to replace them. If you don't mind my hand sketching here I don't know if you can see it, but um, it's part number 22918. And the phone number you call to order it is 1-800-444-3353. That's the Harbor Freight um, parts line. Now these uh, pads are only $2 each. So you can buy them fairly inexpensively. I've already ordered them. I don't have them in house yet. Um, I ordered uh, eight of them. It only, only cost me, and the shipping is free, by the way. So it only cost me, by the time I paid tax, about seventeen bucks or so uh, to get eight of these, so I can replace them. I still don't like the idea that they cut so easily. So I'm going to attempt in this video. To modify them a little bit and uh, we're gonna see how it uh, works out so the first thing I'm gonna do here in my attempt to modify these is I'm gonna remove this pad it's a 14 millimeter nut on the end so I'm just gonna try to knock that off <coughs> was easy enough okay so now I'm free to uh, spin it right off Uh, before I spin it off completely, I'm going to get these screws out of here. Like I say, if you just want to simply order the new pads, they're easy enough to change. You just kind of do these four screws. When I understand the new pads even come with new screws. So you can easily see what's occurred here. The, uh, the pinch welds on the automobiles have cut right through the pads. So now I'm going to finish uh, spinning it off. Okay. Now what I've uh, purchased on um, Amazon are these uh, little pads. They've got a slot down the middle that are made for those pinch wells and they're a much harder rubber. So it's going to take the pinch wells a lot longer to cut through them, if at all. So my game plan here is to drill four holes in this uh, rubber block. Drill and tap four corresponding holes in this uh, steel pad and attach the block like you see it here. Now the I like the idea of this because that reinforced pinch well will fit in this slot and it'll make it impossible for the car to slip. Okay friends, I've got my drill press set up. 
I have no idea how well I'm going to be able to drill into this hard rubber. It's almost like a neoprene. Uh, what I'm going to attempt to do first is spot the holes. So I'm going to try to very carefully spot all four holes. Looks like it cuts quite nicely. Okay. Alright. That looked like that spotted quite nicely. So I'm going to do all four holes, but I'm going to set my depth. So I'm going to bring this down and adjust my stop. Okay, let's try the next one. Very good. Do the next one. Excellent. Okay. So now, um, that looks like it cut very nicely, and, it, and I got some nice holes spotted. And they're all nice and even because of this magnetic uh, stop I've got here. Okay, friends, uh, off camera I spotted the remaining three pads. Now I'm ready to counterbore these holes. I've got a 716 drill I'm going to use for this purpose. And I've got the drill so it'll cut about halfway down. Perfect. That is perfect. All right, so we'll do the rest of these holes. This stuff really drills nicely. It's a nice hard rubber. Off camera, I'm gonna drill the rest of these and I'll come back when that's done. I've got one more thing to do before I break this setup, and that's to drill the through hole. I'm using a quarter inch drill. Um, this material tends to cut a little undersize. The diameter of the metric thread I'm using is 230 thousandths, so I'm going with a 250 thousandths diameter drill. Now, there's always a possibility when you're drilling to do something that the pot could lift, so hold it down nice and tight. And drill very slowly. Alright, that didn't lift at all. That was good. So don't get overconfident. Treat every single hole with respect. So let's see how our screws fit. Let's pop them in there. And it sticks out, I would say, about a quarter of an inch. Um, let me give you a better look at that. So that's uh, about the thickness of the metal we're going into. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead off camera and uh, drill up the other three. So now that all of these have been drilled, that's all we're going to do to these. These are ready. So I'm going to break up this setup. Okay, you'll notice I'm using a rag here to clean off the uh, plate. Um, don't do this when the drill is turning because this rag could get caught up in there and take your hand right with it. Okay, friends, uh, as you can see, I'm working on a little math here. I apologize to my friends around the world that are on the metric system here in the United States. We still 
primarily deal with inches. That's what I'm accustomed to. So all these values are in inches. The dimension of the steel plate is 4 inches, 920 thousandths. The dimension of the rubber adapter I'm working with is 2 inches, 950 thousandths. The difference is 1 inch, 970 thousandths. Dividing that number by 2, I come up with 985 thousandths. Friends, the reason you saw me doing that math is because I want to center these rubber blocks over the steel pads. So what I've done off camera, I've taken some uh, dicum and I have uh, brushed it onto the steel pad. Now dicum is a product that's used in the uh, manufacturing industry. It's used in layout work. A technician will lay out a piece of metal, put dicum on it, and then he can scribe exactly where the metal is to be cut. So in this instance, that 985 dimension that you saw me come up with, I've set my dial calipers to exactly that dimension. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the calipers along the edge and I'm going to scribe the dicum so that tells me exactly where that pad is going to go you can see I've got it all scribed off now it doesn't have to be perfectly centered but this is going to get me pretty damn close. So what I've done here is I've sprayed some contact adhesive underneath this uh, rubber block. And the idea is to temporarily glue this rubber block using the uh, lines I scribed to center it. Thereby, uh, I'm going to use this block as a template to spot the holes for tapping and drilling. So I'm going to uh, take this and carefully try to line up the holes. Now I need some real good light for this. So I'm going to take this outside in the daylight and, and do it. I'll be right back when that's done. Well friends, um, the pad is on there nice and tight now. So I can go ahead and use it as a template to start the uh, holes for drilling and tapping. Now there was no real good way to hold this plate in my vise because of the long uh, threaded rod coming out for the bottom. So what I did is I pulled the bracket that holds it out of the cross member and I'm using that to hold it on the vise. So let's see how this goes. So all I'm doing is just spotting the holes. Using the the rubber see as a template. Okay, I believe that's it. Let's see how it came out. Spin it off. Alright, I'm going to see if we can get this block off of here. Yep, came right off. And as you can see, I've got all four of my holes nicely spotted. One, two, three, four. So now I'm going to take some uh, acetone and try to clean all this gunk off of here. So I'm going to do the others off camera and I'll come back when I have that done. Friends, I'm ready to uh, drill the holes for tapping. The theoretical drill size for an M6 tap is 197 thousandths. The closest I could come to that here in the shop is a number seven drill, which is 201 thousand. So it's about four thousandths oversized, but for our purposes, uh, that's not a problem. One issue I ran into in uh, securing the uh, plate this way 
was it was kind of wobbling a little bit. I'll show you how I resolved that. What I did was I uh, cut off nice and square an old piece of uh, exhaust pipe that I had lying around and I used that to uh, stabilize the plate that I'm going to be drilling into. I just simply screwed this thing down tight till it came in contact with the exhaust pipe and that's holding it nice and stable for me to drill and tap with. Okay friends, we're going to go ahead and drill these holes. Uh, before I start, I'm just going to take a little level and make sure we're somewhat level here and we're pretty damn good. The other thing is I've got some oil that I'm going to use to dab the drill with from time to time. So let's get started. That drills quite nicely. Again, as I mentioned earlier in the video, if you're going to use a rag like this, don't do it while the uh, drill is turning. I'll finish drilling these other three holes off camera. So now I'm going to replace the uh, drill with a tap. Let's get that out. I have to move this out of the way. There we go. We'll put that aside. And I'm going to install a tap. Now I'm not going to tap on the power. I'm just using this drill press to start the tap. If you were to try to tap this by hand, you'd never get the tap straight and your threads would all be on an angle. So while I've got it clamped nice and level, I'm going to take my tap and I'm just going to start the four holes. So all I'm going to do is hold this down and give it a turn just to start these threads. Of course the thing wants to move on me. Could probably tap it all the way down like this. All right, so now we're going to back it up. We got that one started enough. There we go. Okay. So rather than bore you, I'll uh, do the rest of these off camera. Okay, so now that I've got these uh, four holes started, I'm going to remove the tap. And I'm going to very lightly countersink them. Probably could have done this before I started tapping, but it doesn't really matter. So now I've uh, placed the tap in a tap holder. I'm going to brush a little dab of oil on it. And I'm going to finish tapping these by hand. You can see what I'm talking about. If I were to try to tap these without starting them on the drill press, then what would happen is um, I would most certainly get them crooked. So now I can finish the hole by hand. And actually the fact that the drill is very slightly oversized, it makes them a little easier to tap than they otherwise would be. Uh, the standard is 70% uh, of thread. I've probably got 65% of thread. You can see how difficult it would be to get these started straight if I didn't have these holes already started there we go that one's done 
So I'll finish up the other two off camera. I don't want to make this video too awful long. So uh, I'm going to come back when I'm ready to assemble the pad onto this uh, plate. All right, uh, I'm ready to install the pad. I'm going to put a little brake cleaner on there just to clean any oil residue off of this plate. And I'm going to set the pad on there with one of the screws. Let's get one of them started. Okay, I got one started. I'm not going to tighten them until they're all in. Okay, it's two in. They're all lining up very nicely as I would expect them to because I use this actual uh, pad as the template. All the pads are identical, so they should be interchangeable from one plate to the other. So now I'm going to torque them all down or tighten them all down. But that'll be good. It's rubber, don't forget, so you're not going to put a lot of torque onto them. My carpal tunnel that I've developed over the years is starting to bother me twisting these. I probably should have used a... Uh, electronic driver, an electric driver. Okay. So now I'm curious, if I figured everything just right, these screws should be pretty much almost flush with the bottom so I'm gonna unscrew it and we'll have a look at that well wow, they're pretty pretty close to flush so uh, that's what I was looking for so uh, I'm happy with that so it looks like I almost know what I'm doing but not quite okay so I'll come back when all this is put together and the cross member is all back together and we'll try We'll try jacking up a car. Okay, friends, uh, here is your uh, finished product. The new modified blocks have been secured to the Daytona crossbeam uh, plates. And we're ready to try this thing out. So I'm going to bring a car down and uh, let's see what happens. One of the issues you're going to have, friends, and you've been dealing with this if you've been using one of these cross beams is even with the original pads which are about an inch lower than the modified pads um, some cars are too low for them to fit under so the fact that we've got another inch there is going to make that a little bit worse now the extra inch is great if you're working on a SUV or a pickup but what I have to do quite frequently when I'm working on a car like this one that's low to the ground is I have to use an extra jack just to lift the car an inch or two so I can get these under there. Now that's something, like I said, I've been doing right along because many cars, even with the original pads, it still wouldn't fit underneath. So it's not really a major deal for me. Okay, I'm going to get down low so you can see this. Okay, uh, these are these reinforced pinch wells I've been talking about. So I'm going to bring the jack up and I'm going to try to get the pinch weld inside that slot. Oh, 
there. Now I'm going to go around and slide the back one in. Maybe already there. Yep, it is. So now we're going to uh, start jacking on the vehicle. Okay, I've got the wheels off the ground. I really don't need to go any higher. This is just an experiment. Okay, well, hopefully you can see it. Because I really can't see what you're seeing because I've got the camera on such an angle. But the reinforced pinch wells are inside the slots. And that means that this car can't possibly slip off. So uh, we've got the car off the ground. It looks like it worked quite nicely. So I'm going to let the car down and see if there was any damage to the blocks. Okay, so uh, it worked quite nicely. Um, a little bit of dirt got in that uh, slot, so I really can't tell if there's any damage or not from jacking the car. So I'm going to take a little brake cleaner and spray it out. And I'll let that dry. Are you done? Well, now you just destroyed my video. I'm going to have to start again. Thank you very much. I'll edit you out. Okay, um, I can see no damage whatsoever to these uh, blocks. They're a lot harder rubber than the original uh, pads that came with the cross members. Of course, this was only one jacking, and I didn't jack the car awful high. But I'm, I'm sure that they're going to hold up much better than the original pads. The original pads are very soft, and... These modified pads that I put on are very hard. Don't fret over the fact that I had to jack up the car a little bit to fit this under. I have to do that quite often anyway. These cross members, even with the original pads, won't fit underneath a lot of the cars. So I'm going to call this job a success. I want to thank you once again for watching Rick's Garage. Before I go, I'll post two videos to your left. Feel free to click on one or the other should you find them of interest. And to your right will be a picture of my avatar in the form of my trusty German Shepherd. Please, by all means, feel free to click on that if you wish to subscribe to my channel. So thanks again, and we hope to see you all very, very soon.